Well, hey, 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 hey. Actually, sounds like I'm not tone deaf for a minute. This video's objective is chi-square test, but a little bit more specificity now. Chi-square for independence, chi-square for association. So turn to page 11 of your notes. Now, as we work on this new chi-square test for independence, you're going to find that the mechanics of this is going to be the same as it was for the chi-square for homogeneity. But what's going to be different is our HO and HA. And our biggest challenge is going to be which one is homogeneity and which test is um, independence. So let's jump into these notes to talk about independence, and then we'll do some comparisons. Okay, so we, all, we often gather evidence and arrange them in a two-way table, okay, to see if the two categories are associated with um, each other. And here, what's happening is that now we're looking into relationships or associations between the two variables. Is there an association between caffeine and um, hyperactivity? Okay. And here, that begs, begs the question, is the association in this sample evident of a relationship between the variables? So we're looking for an association, a relationship, or also the word, is it dependent? So as I'm looking at this idea right here, how is a test of an association different from a test for homogeneity? I'm glad you asked. So first of all, independence analysis, um, has the analysis of a relationship between the two variables. Okay, Does, Is one affecting the other? Here, we are going to be comparing two categorical data or comparing categorical data. And remember, um, CHI is always about categories, okay, with several populations or treatments. So as we're looking at this idea, we are analyzing a relationship. Are they dependent? Is there an association? Is there a relationship, again, between several populations? Let's continue on to the next page. Now, I mentioned that the mechanics between the chi-squared for homogeneity versus the chi-squared of independence are the same, but the state is going to be different. The state portion, the null hypothesis, is saying that there is no association. Okay. Also, the two categories are independent of which takes me to the alternative hypothesis. There is an association, and with this one here, okay, or I can say the two categories are not independent, and I know these are this double talk, and you can say um, dependent if you choose to. So as you're making a choice, try to stay consistent with what we've been doing. I kind of like the idea of no association, because remember, we've said that there is um, no difference, because we keep saying the word no in our HO. But sometimes the question will just straight up say, is there, are they dependent or independent, which means that we'd have to use this phrasing. So let's look at it. What's next? Our conditions and assumptions. Well, it's the same thing. It is our randomness, our 10% rule, if it's not an experiment, and our large count has to be greater than or equal to 5. What's the test statistic? Wait for it, wait for it. Oh, it's exactly the same. Remember I said the mechanics were going to be um, the same. So let's jump to problem number 42. And here, eh, I think I want to do problem, I don't want to do 42. I changed my mind. Go ahead and read it. Now here, we're trying to establish that there is a relationship between the degree that you hold and the type of scientific or not scientific um, astrology 
um, that is applicable to you. So saying it again, we're trying to see Sorry for the phone. That's what happens when I'm at school. Okay, so we're trying to see if the opinions um, are going to differ, whether you consider astrology scientific or not scientific based on your degree. Well, they're saying that there's a relationship or there's an association between your level of education and your thoughts on that. And this first one asked me to describe what I see. And as I can see here, and let me pop up the answer in the book for a minute, please. We can see how I'm drawing this, but... Let's show the clear drawing from the book. Now here's the nice histogram that has been drawn for the different um, academic levels, because that's what we're comparing, is our academic levels in relationship to um, your opinion. And as you can see, the bottom line, it seems here, is that the higher, the, um, the higher your academic level, the less likely you are to believe that astrology is scientific. So that's what it's saying right there. Okay, now let's see what's next. Okay, now problem number 44 is telling us to state the appropriate hypothesis. Okay, do our expected counts. Calculate our a chi statistic, degree of freedom p-value, and the conclusion. So, what are they saying? State, plan, do, conclude. And yes, because this is a chi-squared test, here they're telling us a chi-squared for independence, and this is um, given our samples right here. So what is the appropriate hypothesis going to be? There is no, love the word no, association between the academic levels um, on these opinions, whether their astrology is scientific or not, and which takes us to our HA, there is an association. Okay. And doesn't this look similar to what we've done before? Oh, yeah, except now we've got to plug in the word here, association, or you can use the word they um, are independent, but I think for some of you, using no association might be less problematic. Okay, next thing I know is I want to come up with my expected count. They didn't ask me for my plan um, completely, but here... It is reasonable to assume randomness because um, when they took this survey, yeah, large count is going to be 10% um, of all the people that hold some type of a degree. And here are our expected counts. It's a hot mess, sorry. The math is done the exact same way as it was before. And remember, it's easier to put it in the calculator. Well, it's just not easier, it's less time consumptive. Okay, part C. Here is our chi distribution. So here's our observed minus our expected squared divided by the expected for this first cell and then I did it for this last cell. My chi value is 10.51 excuse me 10.581 10 my degree of freedom is going to be less than um, my degree of freedom is going to be, I don't have it written down here so let's do it My degree of freedom, like I was saying, is I've got two rows, so two minus one, and I've got three columns, so that's three minus one. So, of course, two times one gives me a degree of freedom of two. And my p-value per my calculator is point zero zero five. Then, of course, that means that we are going to reject the HO. So yes, we're rejecting the HO, which means we're going to support the HA. So there's convincing evidence that there is an association between academic levels, or I should say education levels, and your opinion about astronomy.
okay, well, that's it. And one more thing, though, before I say TTFN, please notice the differences. Oh, there wasn't much except for the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. And then, of course, your conclusion is always based on those two. So, okie dokie, TTFN, ta-ta for now.